Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to talk about Cascade Deletes in Microsoft Access. They're very dangerous, but they can also be very powerful. But of course, remember, with great power comes great responsibility. So we're going to talk about that in today's video. Today's question comes from Ava in Tempe, Arizona, one of my Platinum members. Ava says, in your video about referential integrity, you said that cascade deletes are dangerous and that I should avoid them. Can you explain what they are a little more and when I should and should not use them? Are they really that dangerous? Yes, they can be dangerous. And what I tell beginners and like the very beginning of my expert users, when we start getting into relationships and stuff, I say just avoid them. They're dangerous. Be careful. Because if you really don't know what you're doing, and even if you do know what you're doing, it's possible to accidentally delete stuff you didn't realize you were going to delete. Let me show you some examples. Before we get started, if you have not yet watched my video on referential integrity, go watch this first. All right, this is important so you understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, go watch it and come on back. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database you can download off my website if you want to. And in here we got customers, right? Here's a customer. Each customer has orders and each order has details, okay? And if you wanna learn how I built this database, you'll find a link down below to my invoicing video. Now, as it stands right now, I do have relationships set up on a global level between customers, orders, and order details. I have referential integrity set up. And what that does is it says, if you got a customer and that customer has any child records, whether it's orders, contacts, anything else, you can't delete that customer. That's what referential integrity does. So if I open up this and I try to delete me, it says you can't do it because order T includes related record. Okay, all right, so let's go to orders. Okay, let's try to delete this order now. Ah, still can't do it because order detail T includes related records. So in order to delete this customer, I would have to delete all of the orders for that customer. And for each order, I'd have to delete all of the detail items. All right, and that might seem like a lot of work, but it's, it's actually a pretty good thing, especially for novice users. Novice, novice, however you pronounce it. All right, you don't want people accidentally deleting all of their orders. Why? It could mess up all your accounting. All right, if these orders are linked to other places where you have your accounts receivable, you've got your, you know, your, uh, your income information for taxes, all that stuff, you keep this stuff in the database. Okay, keep it. If the order needs to get canceled, just mark it unpaid and maybe even have another field here that says canceled, but leave the order in the system, All right? That's what I say, all right? Don't delete data, all right? I got a whole separate video on why you shouldn't delete data, customers, orders, all that stuff. Just mark it inactive. If you don't wanna see the stuff on your, on your reports or in your combo boxes or lists or whatever, just mark them inactive and then program your combo boxes and your reports accordingly. Unless you're dealing with tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of records, space isn't usually a problem nowadays. So just keep that old customer, even though the guy died or moved away and you'll never be a customer again, you wanna keep his historic information in your database. So if I turn on cascade deletes, watch what happens. All right, we can go to here and we can say cascade delete related records for that one. And then over here, Cascade delete related records. Okay, so now what's gonna happen is if I delete a customer, all of their orders and all of their order details just go bye-bye. Ready, save it, close it, open up me, and then delete. Gone. All that stuff is just gone. And if you look in here, trust me, it, I'll verify it, it's just gone. All right, here's Starship parts from customer two. Okay, so here's customer two, right? Click, delete. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Well, guess what? All of his orders are now gone. And this is why I don't like cascade deletes in most situations. You gotta be very, very careful when you use cascade deletes. Now, are there instances where I will use cascade deletes? Yeah, but usually only when it involves data that I know is gonna be temporary. For example, in my database, I've got an email batch table and then an email queue. All right, I'll do different promotions like summer specials, holiday promotion. I usually only do like one or two of these a year, but I do do them. And when I do, I'll queue up a bunch of emails to go out for that promotion and I'll assign it a batch number. All right, so here's my batch table. It's got summer specials. It's batch one. Fall sale might be batch two. 
And then maybe after a couple of months, I don't need to keep this information around, right? The email and what was sent to each person. Okay, so in that case, I'll enforce cascade deletes here. If I delete the batch, it'll delete all the emails in the batch. And that's just housekeeping because that's not information I need to save. All right, once the batch is out, I really don't care about that data anymore. So that's an, a good use of cascade deletes, right? Deleting old log tables, for example, that kind of stuff. But don't use it for any tables in your database that actually matter, where you actually care about the stuff. And orders, all right, even contacts, that's stuff you want to keep. You don't want to lose that. Right. Even in the future, if the customer goes away, you don't want to lose all of his old or all, ugh, all of his old orders. Say that 10 times fast. So I think it's actually a good thing that not having cascade delete slows the user down. Right. If they want to delete Deanna Troy, they have to. Oh, OK, she's got orders. We got to make sure well, she doesn't have any orders. But you know what I'm saying? If you pick someone that's got orders, you can't just willy nilly delete them quickly. OK. You have to mindfully go into each order and then delete all of the items and then you can delete the order and you gotta do that with each order. So that just makes it, it makes it harder for users to delete stuff you don't want them to delete. Another problem with cascade deletes is that referential integrity doesn't work across linked tables. So if you've got your database linked to multiple backends, for example, you can't enforce referential integrity. You can only enforce it in that database. So if all your tables are in one backend database, you're fine. But if you got them, like I got them spread across several different tables. There are several different database files, so you, you can't use referential integrity. So you have to come up with your own solution. What kind of solution am I talking about? Well, in the extended cut, I will show you how to manually handle cascade deletes, kind of. We're going to make our own delete button for the order. Okay, we're going to handle it manually with a VBA SQL solution. So our button is going to do a few things. First, it'll check to make sure that the order is not paid. It'll say, hey, you can't delete it. Can't delete a paid order. You cannot delete a paid order, Captain. Right? All right. And if it's not paid, at least that slows the user down one more step. They have to manually unpay it. And you could put some security behind that if you want to as well. Okay. But if it's not paid, you're still going to get an are you sure? I like the are you sure? Are you sure you want to delete this? You're really sure. Okay. And what that'll do then is it'll run some SQL. It'll delete these guys, it'll delete the order, and then it'll return you back to the customer form and everything will be taken care of. Whether you have linked tables, whether you have cascade deletes or referential integrity or all that stuff installed, it doesn't matter because we're going to make sure we handle it ourselves. That's covered in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. There's hundreds of them by now, folks. So lots of stuff to watch. But that's going to do it. There's your cascade delete tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming as long as you keep watching them I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now.
It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.